Hey guys, it's Lynn with Little Fit Nursery. I am here with reborn baby Kai. He's the Phoenix Sculpt by Andrew Arcello. And um, I'm gonna change him into this really cute um, Disney baby sleeper um, with Winnie the Pooh on it. And I got this from Shop Disney. Like I get a lot of my Disney baby clothes. I just thought this was super cute and would look cute on him. And um, wanted to chat a little bit about out, a little bit about our vacation. Um, this is now several weeks later um, <laughs> that I'm chatting about it, but um, but yeah, wanted to talk about a little bit about what it was like to travel, kind of during um, the kind of peak of Omicron, and you know I'm just very very thankful that you know we did all manage to stay healthy. Um, I feel like every I feel like um, so many people I know have um, have gotten sick, but thankfully the new variant seems to be less um, less severe. Um, but yeah, I wanted to go ahead and change Kai and just chat a little bit about our trip. And also by the time you guys watch this, um, it'll be, it should be, um, Lunar New Year. So happy Lunar New Year to, um, any of you guys out there who celebrate. Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and change Kai. So, um, so the trip we did, and we go to Disney quite a lot because we are Disney Vacation Club members. We have, um, points it's it's basically Disney's version of their timeshare and they have like I don't know 13 or so hotel, resort hotels in the Disney World area that our points are good for as well as the Grand Californian Hotel here in Disneyland Resort and Aulani which is Hawaii so that's why you probably see us going to some of these same places over and over and as a massive huge Disney fan I'm I, I love going to Disney over and over again um I will, I will do another video in my next video, just to talk a little bit about kind of travel in general. Um, and just, um, some, some ideas, um, on travel during this time. So definitely don't want to miss that one. Okay. But with, um, our recent trip, we, um, we spent six days in Disney world and then we did a three night cruise, um, a, a three night Disney cruise and it just went to Disney's private Island um, uh, but yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was very nice, but yeah, let me talk, talk a little bit about our, the Disney world portion of the trip first. So we, um, we took a really early morning flight and, you know, our family, it's really hard to get us out of the house super early. Um, but you know, somehow I feel like when, when we do those early flights, it really does help us to adjust to Eastern time faster. It almost feels like there's like very little kind of jet lag or adjustment period. I mean, uh, on when we go to the East Coast, the kids do end up staying up pretty late and things like that. And we just kind of don't worry about it because it's vacation and we're going to have to switch back <laughs> to California time. So anyway, so we woke up really early, uh, took our flight to Orlando. Oh my gosh, this is just adorable. Um, yeah, took the flight to Orlando and then from there... And Disney used to do this shuttle called Magical Express, which was free transportation. And it was so awesome because they would actually pick up your luggage for you from the baggage claim and then um, bring it to your hotel directly if you were staying on property. Oh my gosh, it was so great when they did that. But then they discontinued it and we happened to travel out on New Year's Day, which was literally the, the first day it was no longer valid. So um, I, I kind of priced out, you know, th the shuttle service is called Mirrors and you can still book it, but um, you have to pay per person. And so just kind of from the, you know, little bit of research I did, it seemed like it'd be cheaper to take a lift. So we just did lift um, from the airport to the hotel and um, we stayed at the Saratoga Springs Hotel, which is um, really, you know, it's, it's, it's our home resort, but it's not like our favorite hotel. Um, we... We mainly pick it when we can't get anything else, essentially. Um, but yeah, we, we checked in and we, we stayed in a studio room, which is just like basically, um, it's basically like a regular hotel room, except they have a very small kitchenette. Oh my gosh, you guys, how cute does Kai look in this outfit? Oh, he looks so cute. You know, you guys, if I didn't have this channel, I would probably go months and months without handling my babies, but this does... Oh, look at him. Look at this cutie. Oh my God, he's so cute. Oh my gosh. I find, um, anyway, gosh, lots to chat about. Okay, so 
yeah so anyway so we um checked into our, our hotel and then i think the first full day um we did oh and the thing that i was like so like really really wanting to try they have this new restaurant called space 220 that's in epcot and um it's like a it, it's a it's very very hard to get a reservation it just opened up in the fall it's pretty pretty expensive so it's i don't know that we would do that every trip or try for that every trip but um i really wanted to try it at least once cuz they simulate you going up and um, going up, blasting off into space. And then it's like, you're kind of eating at the international space station and you have these like panoramic windows where you can see like a view of earth and it's beautiful. So anyway, we were very, very lucky. We use this, um, service called mouse dining to stock, you know, basically to give us reservation alerts if somebody canceled a reservation. And after many, many alerts and many times attempting and failing to secure a reservation, we finally got one for um our first full day so so yeah so that our first full day we went to epcot did dined at space 220 um which was awesome and we also were lucky enough to get a virtual queue um you know a uh, spot in line to ride the new uh remy R remy the um from ratatouille um, they have a new uh ratatouille ride in the france pavilion and that was super cool too so that was literally how we started our day um, anyway, awesome day, you know, we rode, you know, some other attractions that are our favorites and then, you know, kind of came back, um, to the hotel and, and then the next day I believe was animal kingdom. And then we did magic kingdom or did we do? Yeah. Yeah. Then we did magic kingdom and then Hollywood. Oh no. Hollywood studios in the magic kingdom. Anyway, we had like different, we basically had to kind of organize our, our days, our park days, depending on like which, where we were able to get dining reservations. I feel like going to Disney World is like an organizational jigsaw puzzle. Like you have to kind of figure out, all right, which hotel are you staying at? So which parks are closer to your hotel? So we, we did a split stay. We did three days at Saratoga Springs and three days at the new Riviera Resort. And um, I like the Riviera Resort is super convenient for Hollywood Studios and Epcot. Um, because you can just ride the Skyliner and hop on and you're there in like minutes. So I wanted to try to kind of, you know, really do those two parks more in the back half of our trip, but it didn't quite work out that way. I think we ended up doing Magic Kingdom one of the days, but it was fine. Um, and, oh, I have to tell you guys, like going to another highlight was just going to Sierra, uh, going to Riviera Resort. And um, I think one of the funnest days we have was, I think it was like our final day there. We um, actually went swimming at the hotel pool and really, really had so much fun. Um, my son, Ethan loves zero entry pools where the water just like very gradually goes down. So really, really liked it. And, um, yeah, we had a really, a, a really good time in terms of COVID protocols. So Disney world is pretty straightforward. You need to mask when you're indoors, obviously, except for dining. And then when you're outdoors, it's optional, but I did notice, um, quite a few people, we're voluntarily masking up outdoors. And we also tried to do the same um, as much as we were able. I wouldn't say we were 100% compliant on that, but um, but yeah, but you know, I think we we tried to just because, you know, the, the parks can definitely get crowded. Um, oh, we did watch the Epcot um, fireworks show one night and that was really cool and really enjoyable. Um, trying to think what else. Um, I also, I think I went by myself <laughs> one night to go check out the Magic Kingdom fireworks show. Um, the kids and my hubby, like they, they get tired after like four or five hours, like, and they're, they've kind of like had enough and want to go back to the hotel. So there were definitely a couple times I would stay later, but, um, but you know, the cool thing about going to one destination pretty regularly is we don't feel any pressure to do it all. Um, we just took a trip in August and um, we did manage to do it all because it was kind of a longer 10 day trip all at Disney World. And so, um, and by the way, we had just extra timeshare points because we didn't travel during the COVID year. So those had to be used up. That's why we did two trips. Um, but anyway, yeah, it went really smoothly. Um, we, yeah. And the thing that I was really nervous about was I think the most risky thing we did was definitely all the indoor dining. We definitely had one nice indoor dining reservation every day. So, uh Oh, Ethan is knocking. Um, so 
that was probably the riskiest thing. And I was definitely a little bit nervous because we had the cruise coming up. Not not nervous about the cruise itself, but the protocols to, to board the cruise. Um, first of all, everybody has to be vaccinated. I think um, for the kids 5 to 12, ours might have been one of the final cruises where you could do a negative COVID test in lieu of vaccination. But I think starting mid-January, they're requiring the 5 and up to also be fully vaccinated. So, so you got to be vaccinated and upload your card and everything like that in advance. And then they required a COVID test at the port. And I have to tell you guys, I was um, so worried because I was reading on the message boards of, you know, families who te unexpectedly tested positive at the port and then were turned away and could not board their cruise. And to me, that was just, that would be just such a nightmare situation because, you know, we're in Florida, we're far away from home and then, you know, and it would be unethical and just wrong and just, you know, <laughs> just in the spirit of being like a good human being, like wrong to hop on a flight and just um, fly home. So you'd want to find somewhere where you can quarantine for five days um, before before you travel. And so I was like starting to research like hotels in the area, but like places that would be kind of like a little condo with a kitchen so we could get food delivered and, you know, do a little bit of cooking or whatever and have a little bit more space um, while we're quarantining or um, to have like a couple bedrooms in case like one person tested positive, but the others didn't. And to try to like, I had like, my mind was spinning, but um, thankfully we did not, we all tested negative at the port and we were able to get on the ship. Now the whole process, when you get there, they swap, you know, you swap yourself, somebody supervises you while you're doing that. And then um, you go into this tent to wait for like 45 minutes. You get an email once your results are ready to be viewed. And then um, and then once you log into your email and then log into the Safe Passage website, you hopefully get the, like we saw the clear to sale, clear to sale four times. And I was so happy. So, um, oh, the other thing that I did and I would recommend as a tip uh, we did not let them take our luggage. Um, we we kind of put it with the in the front with the porters and just said, hey, we want to go test, but please don't take our luggage onto the ship yet until we get a negative all clear. The reason for that is I heard of situations where people would get there, check in, check in their luggage, and then go do the COVID test, and then the people who tested positive. They had to then wait like hours to get their luggage back because the luggage was on the ship and they had to locate it and bring it back and it's like a whole big thing. So, um, yeah, so to me, like I, you know, and we specifically for this trip, we did something we never did before, which is to pack four carry-ons instead of two big luggages expressly for that reason, just so we would be able to carry it onto the ship. So... We still ended up carrying it onto the ship <laughs> in the end, um, just like before. But I probably think if, if in retrospect, after we get the all clear, I probably would let them take our bags at that point because it was kind of a pain to drag them through security and drag them, you know, up to Cabana's, um, which is their buffet restaurant at the top deck to eat our, um, you know, to eat our lunch and have our, all our luggage with us. That part was a bit of a pain, but, um, Oh, no, that's not true. We actually, we did drop it off at the room first. Um, okay, so it was fine. It wasn't too bad. But anyway, um, yeah, and we had a, we had a wonderful cruise, you know. Um, Ethan was definitely a bit of a handful. Like he, and for those of you guys who are new to my channel, I have two kids with autism. And so traveling with special needs kids is always sometimes challenging and, and um, it's, it's not easy. So, um, cause they're used to their routines at home. And then when you disrupt that on it with a vacation, it can be kind of tough. So anyway, um, yeah, so Ethan was just like having a little bit of a hard time sometimes. And he, um, he would like finish his dinner and then like knock over all of our drinks and, and just like made big messes. And our poor wait staff always had to clean up <laughs> after him. And, oh, it was so stressful at times, but, um, and it was definitely a little bit of a scaled back experience. I mean, one of the things I love about Disney cruises is they usually do a different Broadway show every night and they couldn't with COVID just because they wanted to make sure the theaters weren't too full of people and to socially distance and space everybody. So, um, yeah, so they only had one show and they had like Encanto playing some other night. So it was still fun. And, um, oh, I had a lot of fun doing trivia. I actually... We, we ended up winning the Disney Tunes trivia 
Um, this is another benefit of traveling during COVID. Um, it's a less crowded ship, so you get more chances to win stuff, <laughs> which is cool. So that was a real thrill and, and definitely one of the highlights of, of the trip. And, but look, we had an awesome time I and mean, it's hard, you know, I, I really feel like Disney cruises and cruises in general are just really, truly my favorite form of vacationing. And, um, we just had so much fun. So anyway, yeah. And, you know, then we, um, and we, we stayed healthy throughout the trip. When we got home, we, um, we did a rapid test to make sure we could send the kids back to school. They were both negative. And then, um, we tested them again, five days later and again, negative. And we've just knock on wood <laughs> managed to stay healthy. We're very, very, very thankful. Um, and both kids have had, you know, um, classmates test positive in the last few weeks. And so we've just been monitor monitoring them and, um, yeah, it's a nerve wracking time for sure. And, you know, I think a lot of, you know, every, everyone's sort of in that, you know, same boat. So anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed hearing about my trip. Um, I hope I didn't bore any of you guys who weren't Disney fans. Just wanted to give you a sense of, um, you know, what it was like traveling and, and just so you know, like the types of masks, um, to wear, we highly really, we really like the, I think, um, I think it's like called the K KF94 mask, which is kind of like an origami style. Um, it has like sort of a panel like this and then like a flap on the top and bottom. You guys have probably seen those. We really like those. We buy the disposable ones from Amazon. They're not cheap. They're probably like, you know, the, the, the seller we buy from, like, I think they're maybe a dollar fifty each or something like that. So, but we're, when we're going to like a higher risk situation, like, um, when we go to a theme park or, you know, um, think, or like an airplane and stuff like that. And, and our Disney world trips, we have worn those every day. And, um, and look, you know, I, I can't say that that will guarantee that you don't get COVID, but it is a good quality mask. So just something to look into. I think it fits the face really well and prevents air from escaping. So anyway, just my little plug <laughs> for the KF, I think it's called the KF94 mask. So um, anyway, but yeah, and, and I won't post a link to the place that we buy. We, we buy from various different sellers and a lot of them sell out at different times, but Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe. Kai's going to say bye to you all, and we will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.